uh, Brookdale's own. We have a Brookdale student who is a comedian. He is a media communications major. Uh, he has had a long interest in comedy, uh, I believe ever since uh, he was uh, very, very, very young. And uh, we're very pleased to uh, have him, his first Brookdale appearance. And remember this moment, because years from now, when you turn on The Tonight Show or Comedy Central, you're going to say, I got to see him for free here at Brookdale Community College. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mike Rossi. Yay. I wish he told me it was free. I was charged on a mission. <laughs> FYI, that's how you make a lightsaber sound. Some people just want to watch the world burn. Like I know someone who worked at a movie theater. Every time she gives someone a ticket, they say, that, here you go, enjoy your movie. Because he wants them to say, you too, even though she's not seeing a movie. And I said, what you should say is have a nice day, because then you could have a nice day. And she goes, why would I do that? That avoids the awkward situation. Some people want to watch the world burn. Most common people, math teachers. And I, I, I can prove it too. It's not even that I don't like math. I, I do like math, I do, but math teachers are even. Here, 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 let me, let me explain it. Basic addition and subtraction. Five plus seven is 12, seven plus five is 12. Seven minus five, two. Five minus seven, that can't be done. That's why they tell you, you can't do it. You can't take seven away from five. Then all of a sudden, they change it all around, and now there's negative numbers. All of a sudden, there's a whole other realm of numbers that we didn't even know existed. Now, five minus seven is negative two. Then it gets worse. They try to make math sound cool, radical. It's a square root sign, no, but radical. Then, right? We all know this. 25 radi radical, five. S six, square root of 16 is four. Square root of 28, well that can't be done, that's not a perfect square, you can't do that. Then, then, all of a sudden, now you can break it up into radical four, radical seven, the answer is two radical seven. Once again, they changed the entire system, and now we have all these other numbers that we didn't even know existed. Then, then they introduced letters. We were having trouble with numbers, and they introduced letters. And the value for the letters changes randomly. X could be any a number at all. It can even be an imaginary number. That's right, we have imaginary numbers. Numbers that we just thought up just because. If I don't imagine them to be numbers, do they still exist? Yeah, they're just non-real numbers. And then, and then to top this all off, they say that math is a building block system. How is it a building block system if you keep ripping out the foundation every four years? What are we building, our ranch house? Another type of people that are really just, they're out to get you, psychologists. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you about a word, it's my favorite word to say. Hippopotamonstrous says a quip adiliophobia. I'll say it again. Hippopotamonstrous says a quip adiliophobia. At a monstrous 36 letters long, this is the longest word in the English language, and it means fear of long words. <laughs> are you kidding me, really, really? And then phobia backwards, a, a biffa, whatever that is. Phobia is fear of palindromes. You're diagnosing people with words they physically cannot say and have panic attacks when they hear. And then another thing, what about antidepressants? Why do antidepressants increase thoughts of suicide? What medicine has a side effect that's the exact, uh, the exact opposite of its cause? Think about it, all antidepressants increase thoughts of suicide, but if you're Think contemplating suicide, should you take antidepressants? And then taking Viagra to be impotent, it just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Another thing that, you know, whoever made the alphabet, that, that guy's a real convincer, he's not right in the head. All the letters are one syllable except for one, W. It's got three syllables. And while we're on this stuff, you see W, there's a lot about W you don't know. First off, W is the only letter that when you say its name, you don't say its sound. W makes a woof sound like who, but W, there's no what in W. Every other sound, when you say its name, you say its sound. And W is the only letter in the language that can be both silent and pronounced at the same time. 
Let me explain it to you. Two, T-W-O, two, woof, there's a woof. You hear the W, T-O, two, there's a woof, there's no W. Grow, end with the woof, G-R-O-W, grow. G-R-O is also grow. So there's the woof there, but there's no W. That W is silent and pronounced at the same time. And while we're on the subject, it's not even a W, it's a double V. And sometimes W can be considered a vowel. No, it can't. Only Y can go either or. You're either a consonant or a vowel. It needs to make up its mind. It's a bipolar letter in the alphabet. <laughs> Another thing that irritates me is the Three Musketeers bar. I like Three Musketeers, I do. But why is it called Three Musketeers? Because there's only the two types of chocolate. You have the hard outer shell. You have the fluffy middle shell. What's the third Musketeer? Air? You know what, I, I think I think one of those musketeers went AWOL. Yeah, he went off and became a sugar daddy, got himself a little baby Ruth. Yeah, he, he sees her now, he sees her later. He's giving her a, a big payday of about a hundred grand to keep her by his side. That's what I think happened. Or he's just hiding somewhere out in the recent pieces. I'm gonna drive that motherfucker crazy. Ooh, I'm just, he's gonna lie awake at night, and I have. All right, one more joke about candy. If you go fishing with gummy worms, what do you catch? Sweetest fish. <laughs> top that with your corny joke contest. Try, try and top that one. Another thing I, I, I realized when I, when I went to the world is that people do things that I'm sure were good ideas at the time, but don't make sense. Play-Doh factories. If you do not want kids to eat Play-Doh, do not make Play-Doh food factories. They have a McDonald's one, they have a donut shop, they have an ice cream shop. I had a fun factory, I never ate Play-Doh once. If you don't want kids to eat Play-Doh, don't tell them to make food with Play-Doh. It's a very simple concept. If you're making blue spaghetti, you don't eat blue spaghetti. I had a fun factory, I've never eaten it. It's one of those things where I'm sure it was a good idea at the time, but then more kids were eating Play-Doh than ever before. And here's another thing. Disney came out with Princess and the Frog. Great movie. We have our first black princess. That was awesome. We broke barriers. Great. 500 kids went to the hospital with salmonella from kissing frogs. <laughs> you think Disney was all about safety and having the happiest place on earth would have mentioned please don't kiss frogs due to salmonella. And some frogs are poisonous. But no one... Why are kids kissing frogs in the first place? Where were their parents? It's like... Those parents who, I, I work at Six Flags, I've been to Fright Fest. It's a very scary place for someone me who's in their 20s. I've seen six-year-olds and seven-year-olds there. They, it's the worst display of parenting ever. They're screaming bloody murder because there's zombie clowns and all this horrible stuff there. They paid like $200 for several years of therapy. There's no way you could possibly justify that. Even if you say they're brave, they saw, I don't know, the ring, whatever. A movie is different than real life, and when you come close face to face with a zombie clown or leather face or whoever they have running around this year, me, I'm gonna be Michael Jackson, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. No one there knows the thriller dance, you would think, but no. But it, it's one of those things where you look around the world and people do people do crazy, crazy things. Like there's a new sport called Bonsai Bungee Jumping. You throw your back, you throw your parachute outside the plane and then you jump after it. Hope, better hope you catch it. <laughs> Crazy. In Japan, this is the fashion trend. People are getting plastic surgery to cut the corners of their lips upward permanently, like the Joker. I, I'm not even seeing this really if you look it up. The tiny corners of the mouth just cur permanently curl upward in an everlasting smile, no matter how disappointed or sad they are. Really? Who can be happy all that time? I'm so mad at you, but you're smiling. <laughs> the world's a crazy, crazy place. And people say, oh, it's this generation, it's millennials, you know, we're too technology driven. We use technology to settle arguments. That's what we use. Most people who use their smartphones say, I can guarantee you're wrong, I'll Google this. That's what we use smartphones for. We use them to settle arguments. We don't use them the way we're supposed to, to gather information. If someone says, hey, what's that movie where Nicholas Cage shouts? Well, I mean, that's everyone, but there's, there was one, there's one he's known for, where he goes like completely crazy, it's Deadpool. I had to, or Deadfall. Damn it, I, ha I can never remember it, so I always have to Google it. I have to you know, remember, because that was the one where he was the first went, you know, crazy. I mean, it's not like, 
I want his face off. I want his face off. That's not that's Nick Cage, but yeah, that's not crazy Nick Cage. Crazy Nick Cage is Deadpool. I can't do it. I'll blow the speakers out. But if you watch, that's the first time when he got his hot head. And he's not the first, and he's not the only one. Lots of people do this, but I see more people doing it now more than often. More often, like people on TV shows, they'll panic, they go crazy all the time. This used to be like a, a niche market. There used to be like very few people that did this, but it happens a lot. If you watch it, I, I took a media course, and it tells you that TV is pandering to the lowest common denominator, which makes you wonder why CBS is proud of the most watched channel. I like their programming, but the world, the world is crazy. Here's a fun fact. This year, 2015, will be exactly one second longer than any other year ever because our rotation is slowing down. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot, but think about this. You're not aging as fast. So, you know, in like 10, 20 years when I'm 40, I'll be 40 for like five years. It's fun. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be immortal. But I'll be dying at age 35, and I'll look, you know, I'll be, look great for my age. Depending on, you know, how you view the calendar. We're not at the point of extra days yet, but, you know, you know what would happen if we had eight days a week? We didn't work. No one would be like, oh, it's in that another day in the week, and no, they put it right in between Tuesday and Wednesday. <laughs> Even after Tuesday, the calendar goes, WTF, really? Three more days until the weekend? WTF, shit. <laughs> Man, it, it's... <laughs> I tried to be so clean. <laughs> I, I was going the whole guy I didn't say one curse word. Damn, I got a dirty mouth. <laughs> oh, bitch, clean it up. Okay. I don't have my sunglasses. All right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some impressions for you guys. Can I, I like my? Yeah, can someone bring those up? Bring them up. Okay. In the meantime, now I I, I do apologize, Bob, because I know you don't like this impression, but I feel it is one of my best. Here's my impression of SpongeBob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is very relating sometimes. <laughs> you want answers? You want the truth? You can't handle the truth. You fucked with the wrong marine. I'll t damn it, I did again. <laughs> I'll twist your head off and piss down your throat. Nathan from A Few Good Men. Does anyone here know who Mitch Hedberg is? The comic. One. You're gonna love this impression. Let us know. A comic once told me, I told you, like Miss Hedberg, I said, boy, I hope not because that man is deceased. I do not know if that was a uh, compliment or an insult. His comment was very ambiguous. I took it as a, com as a compliment because any press is good press. See, that's a really good Mitch Hedberg impression. If you, I mean, it, it is unfortunate he is in fact deceased. And I didn't break that for the joke, but he was a very funny man. Uh, YouTube him or Google him. He, he's worth watching, and he tells jokes like I do. <laughs> I was trying to walk into Target. I missed Mitch Hedberg. All right. See what I, I my impression is goofy. Oh gosh, Mickey. See, this is what I did my whole childhood. I would watch something and imitate it to no end. Here we go, Ace Ventura, okay. All righty then. Do you break? You're an extreme workaholic, we recently returned from a short trip to Bhutan in Northern Africa, and upon your return, you're more than took a nasty pill because of some shoddy masonry works. Very impressive, when you ask how? Surely. Do you breathe in the palm of your left hand to take one stage, bring you pull the three or four feet to four minutes on plaster to, to, to be your super pointer and careless mace being cold, but you know like a classic forgery of the cardio with more so they process than they ask him black market under a line and go, Chan. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Again, that's one of those points where if you didn't see the movie and don't get it. It's like those jokes like a ceiling fan right over your head. Someone got it. <laughs> All right. This will go with the theme of the room. Do you ever wonder why silence is funny? Like, watch. Everyone, just be silent. Watch. <laughs> See? She laughed. She got real nervous when it got quiet. People panic in quiet because quiet is scary. Because you always, you're always, there's always something going on. There's always, you know, sound, ambient noise. But when there's dead silence, it's, it's scary. She panicked and laughed to break the silence. Silence is so fragile when you say its name, it breaks. It's a nervous reaction. We are a nervous, nervous place. We're so nervous that people like us, we overuse LOL. 
Out having lunch? Ha ha ha. Who does that? Out having lunch? LOL. Can't buy my kids? LOL. I know someone who thought lots of love meant LOL. Here's how she found that out. Her friend's mother died. She said, I heard your mother died. LOL. <laughs> That's how she found out LOL does not mean lots of love. It means laugh out loud. <laughs> I, I can't even, like, when I heard that, I was like, really? It took this long for that? I'm surprised, and that happened in the worst way, because most people just, LOL and lots of love kind of interchangeable until you actually mean lots of love, I'm thinking about you. Until that situation where someone dies and you go, LOL, like that's, it's kind of like on Facebook, like, you know, going to a funeral, I like that, haha, -ha. <laughs> I like that. We can't communicate well. And no wonder we can't communicate well. We reinvented a whole language of emojis. We have emojis for everything, but then we have weird emojis, like the gun emoji, or the fire emoji, or the pointing emoji. When are we gonna use those? There's even one that's a little poo, it's a little poo, and it's like smiling. I'm like, when are we gonna do that? When are we ever gonna use that poo emoji? I'm like, unless it's like someone doesn't give a, oh, I'm gonna do it again, someone doesn't give a shit, like I don't give a poop emoji. <laughs> it, I don't understand why they're there, like all these emotions, and then, then, there's the people who don't have emojis and try and do like capital X, capital Z. Ha! Just the ever, ever have, the ever smiling, ever laughing, you know, laugh. That, that laugh that's just so unnerving when it's not an emoji. The emoji's laughing, ha ha ha. But it's like face crack. <laughs> that's what it looks like. You don't know it's laughter. Laughter is a, is a great thing, it's the best medicine. And I think it's really important to laugh at yourself. So I strongly suggest you buy a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here's something that the adults will like. Um, uh, a group of baboons is called the Congress. That explains a lot, doesn't it? All right, th that's my time. Thanks. Oh, follow me at Comic Mike Rossi on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. If I get 10 followers, I'll start to post more regularly. <laughs> I, um, at Comic Mike Rossi, please follow me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.